Hey guys, today's topic is asynchronous FIFO. We have discussed about synchronous FIFO. Please check that video uh, before going through this video. And this topic is super, super interesting. Please watch till end. So, asynchronous FIFO finds the various applications in reality. As we have seen this example, Ethernet dumps the data into asynchronous FIFO and where it's used by PCI Express and, and into the system memory. Here, Ethernet and PC two different clocks, that write clock and read clock. Write clocks control the write operation and read clock control the read operations. So, we know how asynchronous FIFO, synchronous FIFO works. This is the basic diagram of a asynchronous FIFO. The write clock is there, read clock is there, read enable, write data, write pointer, write RST, and read pointer. So these are the interfacing signals of asynchronous FIFO. So whenever write enable is high, we will increment the write pointer and we will write the data according to write clock. This plays an important part. And whenever the read enable is high, we, we read the data from the FIFO based on what? Based on read clock. So, asynchronous FIFO, how do the write pointer over here goes to the read pointer over here? Okay, so we need to synchronize it. We need to synchronize it. I have talked about two flop synchronizers. Please go check that video. That's must. So, as we have seen, we need to use synchronizers to know that this pointer value in this module and this pointer value in this module. So what are we going to use? How are we going to count this right pointer? Are we going to use binary or gray? I Why gray code? As you know, the gray code between the two successive encodings, there's only one bit change. So there's only one bit change. Understand this one bit change is super important. Only because there's one bit change, we are getting a great results in synchronization. As you can see, this is a small example. Let's consider a decimal number five and six. Binary it's one zero one and one one zero. So after synchronization, we'll get one zero one. So while changing from five to six, we need to synchronize it. So we can get the values of one zero one again same because of one zero or 100 or 111. So the possible values are 4. If the depth of the FIFO is 7, so understand, if the depth of the FIFO is 8 and we are getting the 7th value, that means 7 means 0 to 7 and we are false full. The depth is false full and we are getting a full condition. Actually it says 6 but we are getting a full condition. So to avoid this we are going to use gray code. As you can see the same decimal values we are converting into gray code and we can see that difference the values we get is 5d and 5d or 6d. So we are not getting so this is how the binary converter is used as you can see the binary counter over here is converted the values into the gray code and stored in a flops and this is a two flop synchronizer and then given back into the gray to binary and we get the value 101 the desired value is got so let's come to asynchronous FIFO and how are we gonna check the full and empty condition so what are full and empty conditions of asynchronous FIFO so here it comes as you can see this is a 16 deep asynchronous FIFO are at zero then we are gonna get empty so as we write okay let's say that read is over here and the write pointer keeps on incrementing till 50 then wraps back again to zero okay so there's a confusion that oh man it's full or empty it's full or empty who knows it's full or empty we don't know so to avoid this confusion we will add an extra bit in the write adder and read adder but the locations are same understand we are adding extra bits in write adder and read adder but the locations are same so now 
we make write adder and read adder over here. We are making it to 5 bit. As you can see, this is a small diagram I have written. So, nothing to panic. So, it's a zero location in binary. So, as we go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, the file, it's full. So, we need to wrap around and come back. But now, since we have 5 bits, we'll have this value 1000. As you can see, the read is still here having the value 00, but write is having 100. MSB value is changed. MSB value is changed. This is the advantage that we can distinguish between full and empty. So the full condition is that the last pointer, the last bit of write address not be equal to last MSB bit of our adder. So when we compare them, this is the full condition and the empty condition is similar when both values are having 0, 0 or similar values, that's the empty condition. So now let's go to the block diagram, which I'm been showing you, which is a big one. It's not big. Don't be afraid. It's so, so simple. I'm going to clearly explain you. Please be patient for more two or three minutes. So we have three blocks over here. So this is write module. This is read module. And this is the memory. The memory has two clocks over here, write clock and read clock and write RST and read RST write clock enable, read clock enable, everything is present. So this block contains a converter, binary to gray converter, and we generate the write pointer. And this write pointer is passed through the synchronizers and we get the write pointer in our clock domain. So we are getting the write pointer in our clock domain. This is the synchronizers. This synchronizers use our clock. This synchronizers use W clock. So this pointer, we pass through it and to the synchronizers, this is a gray value, okay? This is a gray value, we pass through it and we get this pointer value in W clock domain. So the synchronizers follow W clock. And we need to check this right pointer and this one for WR full and this right pointer and this pointer value for WR RDMT. So based on these two values, we can write into FIFO or read into the FIFO. Let's have a more detailed look. So as you can see, this is the detailed look of the inside of the modules. The right pointer is being converted to code value and stored in a flops. And this is passed through a two stage synchronizer of which the clock is given by read clock. Then after we are converting it to gray to binary and then storing it to the flop and comparing the read pointer value with the pointer value which we got. And we compare it's 5 empty or not. Similarly, similarly, we are doing in the write clock domain. So read pointer is converted into gray code and stored into the flop, then passed to the two flop synchronizer, which is write clock over here and then back converted into the binary and stored and compared with the right pointer. So, so as you know the FIFO full condition, the FIFO full MSB bit, MSB bit should not be equal to the read pointer. So this is the FIFO full and empty conditions we have seen. So that's simple. So nothing, there is nothing in this diagram. This is so simple as you have understood it. So this is the write module and this is the read module. We are going to send the data to the FIFO based on this write enable condition. Read the data from based on this read enable clock enable condition. Read the data out. And we are converting the gray to binary, binary to gray pointer over here, passing through the synchronizers, checking the value and checking the conditions. So that's it. This is the asynchronous FIFO, comment down below. I'm going to answer within 24 hours, okay? Within 24 hours, I'm going to answer any of the queries. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe. Uh, it will be helpful for me to keep motivating and put more videos. Thanks for watching.